Hey guys, today we're talking about a platform called We Video. It is a live action video editor that is web based and it has templates, but also some pretty robust editing capabilities. I want you to know that I paid for We Video with my own money. Today I'm on the unlimited plan. They have a lot of different plans for a lot of different budgets, and I'm kind of on the on the mid tier budget right now. So I'm going to show you how We Video works and let you know what I think of it. So here we are, guys. This is what We Video looks like. It's important to know that you need the Chrome browser to use We Video. And you can either start a video from scratch with a horizontal, square, or vertical aspect ratio, or you can start with a template. There's a bunch of templates in here. I'm going to select Browse All Templates so that you can see the different types of templates that we video offers to you and these templates come with the stock video and then you can obviously modify the text or you can replace the video very easily with your own all right let's go back over to home let's start from scratch building our own project so i can really show you how to use the we video platform let's take a quick tour of the interface right now it defaults to the my media view and this is media that i already uploaded to the we video platform there is a tab over here for stock media and it's important for you to know that this stock media is not included in the unlimited plan that i'm working in right now and it is an upgrade to be able to export videos that include this stock media. So you can create a project with it, but when you go to export your video, it tells you that if you wanna use these clips, you need to upgrade your plan. That is definitely something important that you should know. Let's skip on over here to text. And these are the motion moving dynamic text templates that come with we Video. And if you wanna preview them, you just click over here at the thumbnail and then draw your attention over here to the right side of the screen in the canvas so you can see what the action is. And I have to say, I really like the motion on these text templates. I think they're very nice, they're very modern, and there's a lot of them. Now let's head on over to audio. And these are pre-licensed music tracks that you can use in your projects. There's also sound effects as well. Next up, we have transitions. So once you've laid in two clips, you can uh, transition between the two of them. And again, if you want to preview what the transition looks like, you just click on it. Really simple. And then lastly, there are backgrounds. Some of these are kind of, eh, but some of them are nice. I think this warm glow one is pretty nice. This rainbow glow one I think is pretty nice. Let's drop down over to solids. So there's all these solid color backgrounds. Overlays are little graphics that you can drop in over your videos. And then frames are just static frames that you can put around your video. So these are all your media bins over here. On the top right of the screen is your canvas window. So you can see what your video looks like as you're creating it. Down here is your timeline where you're gonna have the layout of your video. And this is where you're gonna drop all your clips. One thing I would like to do is grab these three little dots here between my bin and my canvas and stretch up the size of my canvas so I can see it better. Let's start creating our first video now. Let's head on over to my video. And so these are clips that I have uploaded into WeVideo. Now it even says here, shown in low resolution for faster preview. Because this is a web-based video editor, the videos are in the cloud, let's say, once you upload them. And so the playback here isn't super high resolution, but when you export, they are high resolution. So this just helps we video run faster to show you a lower resolution preview. Now, if you want to upload videos into we video, let me just show you real quick how you do that. I'm just going to shrink down my browser window here so I can access my finder and you can simply just drag and drop a clip and it begins the upload process. Let's make this full screen again. I'm going to drag the first clip I want into my first video track here, you see I have two available video tracks. We'll get to the second one shortly. 
And then once I have dragged in my clip, this clip is very long. It's, it's 45 seconds. I don't want that clip to be so long. So I can just trim it up by grabbing the edge of the clip here in the timeline. Okay, and if I wanna make modifications to this clip, like do some light color correcting, I just double click it and I get a lot of different options here. The first one is transform. So I can flip the clip around. I can reverse it to make it upside down or flip it back and forth. If my clip was not the right aspect ratio for my canvas, I could force it to fit here. I can scale it up, so zooming in or out on the clip. And I can reposition it either by grabbing it here in the canvas or using the X and Y values and just typing in different numbers. And one other trick that you can do in this transform window is that if your video was very small and lower resolution, let's say it would look like this, you could select this option here and have a blurred background. So it takes your video and blows it up and blurs it out to fill out the rest of the frame. I don't need to do that for this project. Now let's move on to the next tab, which is crop. So you could crop your video. You can move the crop around here. If you want to save those changes, you would just hit this save changes button. I'm not going to do that because we don't need to do that. You can mute the audio or reduce or raise the audio level. I'm just gonna hit mute and you can have it fade in at different half second interval durations or fade out the same way. This effect here is a camera effect. So you can actually zoom in or out or zoom around your frame over time in this window here. So let me show you how that works. First, we're highlighted on start and the scale is just one, which means it's normal. Now what we can do is select end and we can zoom in and then reposition so we end up, let's say here, so her head's not cut off. And if we wanna see what we've done here before we commit to saving changes, hit, hit the play button here. And that's what you get. I'm going to cancel out of that. I don't wanna save those changes. Now let's select the next tab is actually color keying, which means if you had a green screen shot, so you shot someone over a green screen and then you wanted to drop something into the background, this is where you would do that. We're not gonna do that right this second, but we are gonna get to it, so stay tuned. This next one here for me is probably the most important. This is where you're gonna get to do some of your color correction. So I wanna boost up the saturation and the contrast on this shot. So I'm gonna dial up the contrast and the saturation, brighten it up a little bit, dial down the brightness of hair. The hue turns it more pink or green. This one's interesting, it's called temperature. So the temperature means um, the color temperature of the lighting. So usually warmer temperatures indicate indoor lighting um, or late in the day like golden hour lighting and then bluer temperatures are more for daylight and cooler temperatures so let me just show you here if i dial up the temperature to more warm it looks like late afternoon but if i take it this way it feels more like midday or brunch doesn't it so you can really change the way that your video is interpreted by changing this color temperature i'm gonna leave it neutral and then again, tint is another one of those. that I just never use it I never use it. And then in this last window here, you can actually change the speed of your clip. So you can either speed it up or slow it down. All right, so now we've got our first shot laid into our timeline. I'm going to trim this up a little bit and drop in my next shot. And I'm gonna select the section of the shot that I wanna use. I think I wanna pick it up right about there. I'm gonna trim and color correct this one just the same way we did the last. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in a few more clips here before we move on to the next steps. And hey guys, while I'm editing these next few shots, I just wanna remind you to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a future upload. Okay, I've dropped in, trimmed up, and color corrected all of my shots. The next thing I wanna do is add some motion text. So let's go on up to the text tab here and select a text option. I am going to select this one here called Bada Boom and I'm gonna drag it and drop it on my video two line. Now let's modify the text. I'm going to double click it 
And here is where I can change the color. I can change the font and I can obviously change what the words say. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this text to Sunday and then this text to fun day. I'm going to leave this first font as Oswald, but I'm going to take this second font and make it something else. So if you want to see the font options, just hit this drop down menu. Now it's important to note that these are not the fonts that I have installed on my computer. These are the ones that come with Wii video. I'm going to select Yellowtail for this second font and we can scale it up by hitting manual and raising this number bit by bit, or we can just manually type one in. We can change the colors of these fonts, kind of like the yellow and the blue that they use as the default. And then let's head on over to this tab here where you can make some transform changes. Again, you can rotate, you can flip with text. I don't know why you would want to do that. Um, you can change the scale and you can reposition either by changing these X and Y values or just grabbing in the frame. Okay, I'm going to save changes. And now let's add some transitions between some of these shots, maybe not all of the shots. Um, in order to add transitions, it's very simple. You can just head on over to the transitions tab. And like we saw before, you can preview the transitions. I'm going to pick this one here called atmospheric, and I'm going to drop it between my first two shots here. And let me play it back so you can see how that looks. And then if I want to change the duration, I just select that transition there and it lets me change it by typing different values into the box. All right, let's add one more transition later down the road here. I'm just like this one here called mosaic. Let's drop it between my second to last and my final shot. And again, I'm going to right click, change that duration. Now, if we want to add an overlay onto this shot and we wanted to add it, let's say here over where the text is, we actually need another video track. So to do that, you just hit this plus sign and you can either add another audio track or another video track. We're going to go video, add track, and then let's find like a fun overlay. Let's add glitter on top of where our text is. And let me play that back. So we have this cute glitter, but I don't like the way it goes over the text. I actually want to swap these so that the text is above the glitter. So I can just do that here in my timeline just by moving the tracks around. It's really easy. Great. And then let's add some music to finish it up. I'm going to select the audio tab here in my bin. And you can see my track is much much longer than my video. So what I can do is trim it up. So you can hear that the music just kind of cuts out. We actually want to make it fade out. It sounds a lot more polished when we do that, right? So let me show you how to do that. You're going to head on over to these three little dots here and we're going to select show levels. And then we can actually play with the audio levels here. Um, so we want it to be full volume at the beginning, but then at the very end, we're going to click along that blue line and dial down the volume so it fades. Let's see if that's too sharp of a fade. That sounds good. And I'd actually like to fade out this last shot as well. Let's go back up to transitions and we're going to drop a crossfade at the end of that clip. So it just the clip itself fades out with the music. There we go. So that's how you make it sound and look more professional. Now we're ready to export this video. So we're going to head on up to the top right of the screen and select finish. Let's give this a title. Let's export in 4k because that is what the video was shot in and it's going to take a while to export all the rendering is done in the cloud which you know is a lot slower than if you had been doing it on your desktop so now let's go back to the editor 
We don't have to keep that window open. And I just wanna show you something real quick that I promised you we would take a look at. Let's create a new video and let's try to play with that color keying feature. Let's go over to stock video and let's search green screen and let's pick, I don't know, this guy here and let's double click it and head on over to this icon for the color keying feature. So you wanna pick the color selector using this dropper just select that. And then when you head on over to your canvas, you get the eyedropper and we're just gonna select the green and see how it cuts out this gentleman. If I'm really looking at this, I do see a green halo around him. Let's see if we can reduce that. I'm gonna dial up the defringe. Eh, it's not really going away. Let me play with these other values. Keying is hard. And sometimes you, even if you do a really good job lighting your shot, depending on someone's clothing or their hair, if they've got curly hair, it's really hard to get a clean cutout on a person. Um, and I don't think this color keying feature has, in my opinion, enough controls and settings here in this feature to really be able to fine tune that color keying. I'm gonna save changes, and in all fairness, let's drop him over a background. A lot of times, honestly, a background will help. In this case, I actually think it made it look worse around his hand. So, you know, a lot of people might not notice that, but as a pro, that is one of the things I look for. So I wouldn't say it's amazing, 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 but it is nice to have this feature um, if you ever wanted it. So that is definitely a plus with Wii Video again. Now let's take a look at our finished video that we just created. What did you guys think of that video? I thought it came out really, really great. Obviously I was working with great raw B-roll that I really loved, so that always helps. But I think that the additions I could make in Wii Video with the transitions, with the text, with the little Glover glitter overlays really stepped it up a lot. So let me give you my final thoughts on Wii Video. I think this is a great live action uh, editor if you are not a professional editor, but you have ideas and you wanna be able to execute your vision, I think this is a great option for you. There are a lot of templates, but if you want my honest opinion, I don't think the value in Wii videos and the templates, I think it's in the functionality of the platform that you can add multiple video and audio tracks, that you're not locked into templates uh, where you can't really change like the font or the layout or anything like that. There's so much flexibility in Wii Video. I love that very, very much. I love that you can drag and drop your own media and you can actually start editing with it right away even if you're waiting for that media to finish uploading. I love that you have an option to export in 4K. I don't see that a lot online and I love it very much. So I would say Wii Video is definitely definitely a great platform. If you want to check out Wii Video, I'll link to it down below. I really hope you enjoyed this review and tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you again.